how to use image brushes to create effects like this in Affinity Photo, where you slice an image in all kinds of different ways. All right, let's go to the beginning. Let's just go back to the image. Here's the image here. Just go along here and just use this export persona just at the top, click there. And now what you can do is you can create slices. You can create 50 or 100 slices. You can see one slice already there. Let's just remove that and simply just drag across the image. And of course, all kinds of images could be used. Gradients, could use type, and you can do maybe hundreds of these. And I'm just gonna apply it just randomly across the image like that. Or you could go back to the start and create a multiple. I would suggest creating them vertically or horizontally, not mixing. I think sometimes it just doesn't look very good when you do horizontal and vertical mix together. Unfortunately, there's no way of actually making it sort of at angles, but slices are either sort of square or rectangular. And you can see, I can add it like that. And of course you can always undo. If you think, oh, you know what? I'm just doing the slices wrong. Just continue to put them over that side. So they're all in order. Doesn't particularly matter. You can create them in all kinds of ways. So once you've done that, just go here to the slices. Just here, that's in the window menu and click export slices, click there. Now you notice I've already got some already. Obviously I've just run through and done this a few times in trial. Click export and it will come up there. If it obviously has got ones already, you can say, yes, just export them, overwrite them. Now what I like to do is just remove them there. So I just delete them. Don't want them anymore because I come back and maybe create a different set. So I'm going to leave it now. So just go back to the photo persona, just click there. In that, you can now go over here to the brushes. That's in the window menu. Right side menu and just click there. Now I've created a category, Andrew's brushes. I find it easier because if I want to delete all these brushes, I can delete them all in one go by having a category which I can then delete. Go down the bottom to new image brush, click that, and then you get this. You can obviously select the, you might have maybe different folders for different sets of slices. Now I've got that one already created and I'm just gonna select all of them, click open. Now once I've done that, I can then see my brush here. Now, unfortunately, the brush size, for some weird reason, is always set to 64 for the image brush. I don't know why that's the default. Personally, I think it should be about 500 or based on the image you're, that you're using. But I haven't done it that way. So then with that, I can Now, a good thing to do is go over here to layers because you'll notice one thing, this layer is not selected. And as it's not selected, you won't be able to apply a brush stroke to it. And you might think, as I do often, that the brush is not working. So make certain that the layer is selected. That needs to be done. Then go over here and you can double click. Double click and then you can change the size. Now I'm gonna go for something bigger than 64, which I think is way too small for this. Maybe go for, now obviously 780, whatever. Obviously, some of the sizes might be smaller, but aim for about 700, 800 for the sizes. And then you can modify the spacing. Now, you can also press B while you're in here and you get the actual paintbrush tool. And now you can apply it. And now you can see what happens. It creates this lovely, sort of very abstract, broken image very quickly based on the image you've got, or of course, whatever other image you've got in these files. You can also add rotation, so you could rotate it like that, make it flip it upside down. Also, go to dynamics. You can modify the size jitter, so you get maybe small, slightly bigger, and so on, or not. Also, go here to rotation jitter. Change the cyclic, random to cyclic, and you can create all kinds of very abstract, broken image effects like that. Or maybe just keep it straight like that. That's why I went for the vertical more than horizontal. Also, you can introduce scatter, so you can sort of break the image parts. So it goes up and down and just apply it like that. So it splits up and down. And also, you've got huge jitter. So you might decide, you know what, I want some color in this as well. So just increase that to 100%. Maybe click here, go with cyclic, and you can see the colors go through, obviously, the rainbow. 
and you can modify the settings for that. Click on the profile, change different profiles for your colors, and then apply your brush. And as you see, you get this lovely blues and reds and purples, etc., running through your image. But also you can modify this, so texture these brushes. Obviously I've created 11, it could have been 50, it could be 100. And you can just go over here, and with this, you've got random at the moment, so it's just randomly choosing the brush. Well, click here, you can go for cyclic, and it will then choose, obviously depending on the formula in the profile, so click here, and you can select different profiles. And as you apply it, it will take from parts of the image and you'll get a really more interesting, unusual effect that way as well. And you can manipulate it, of course, in many other ways. You can also, if you decide, you know what, that slice too small, you don't want that slice, you can always select it and you can just remove it. So you select any of them and remove. And once you're happy with your brush, click close. And of course, there are other features as well you can use as well. So you can apply that to create some very interesting visual effects with your image. You can also do it with other things. You can go with, say, gradients. Gradients are a great one, so gradient, just apply a gradient, something like that. I'm just gonna use the same image. Obviously, I'm not gonna save it, so I lose the image, but just use the gradient. And that gradient's not particularly very interesting, unfortunately, so just click here, go to swatches, and you can select maybe a different, more, more colorful gradient than that. Now you can see at the moment, it's diagonal. Now I could of course had it horizontal or vertically, but diagonally means when I go and use this feature again, the export slices, obviously some of the colors will be different for each of the brushes. So just click here again. And now again, use the slice tool and just apply it. And again, you can create maybe thin slices more and you don't have to of course put them in order. You could just say, oh, you know what, I'd go down there. But you can also vary the widths, heights, doesn't matter, doesn't have to be exactly the same. Virtually impossible, I think, without actually manually doing it. So I don't think I could exactly guarantee. Unfortunately, there's no fixed size feature in this. I would love to see that. Be nice if you could set it so you could always get the same slice size. Maybe there is a feature for that. Maybe in selection, def defaults, probably something like that. But I, anyway, I'm not gonna, but you can see, you can create multiple slices and you can create say 150, 200 of them, all from these. And you can see, I can just apply it again and again and again. So I've got 18 now, or 19 as it says there. Click export. So export slices, click export, and it will come up with this because of course I've got the files already there. So click export. Personally, I always love to remove the slices. So let's just select them all and just delete them. I don't need them anymore because it's Actually, I've done the export. Now with that, just go back here to the photo, photo persona. And within that, I can now go up here and just click this again and go for new image brush. And now select these ones. So here's all the slices. And let's just move that out of the way and get click the open. And now you can see all of those gradients are here in that brush. Double click. And with that, I can again go here to general. I can modify the size. Again, 64 is always the default. You can increase that and change the spacing. You can see you get effect like that. And also dynamics. Again, you can do scatter. Maybe go for rotation jitter, especially when, obviously when it's a gradient, it's not such a big deal. And also hue jitter as well. So you can see you can create an interesting, colorful design that way. And again, go here for random to cyclic. And you can see then the colors obviously change slightly and then apply it. So close, make certain again, the layer is selected. One weird feature of using the export persona is it some, for some weird reason, deselects the layer. I've noticed that a few times, which means that when you come to use a brush, it doesn't look like it works, which is a slightly frustrating feature. So make certain the layer is selected, then go again, press B, for the brush tool and now apply it. And you can now see you've got a slightly more unusual gradient effect very quickly that way. And of course, you can use all these other features along here. You've got symmetry. So go here, mirror, lock. I was to go for lock and maybe push it up to six and then you can apply and create an interesting visual effect 
using that as well. Great, wonderful tile designs. But you could use this same thing with type or maybe multiple images, maybe use it with pattern designs. Because what you can also do is, let's just remove the symmetry effect, mirror, locked and all that. What you can do, just go here to the move tool and then go to layer and new pattern layer from selection. And then I can just move that and you can see the pattern design there. Oh, that's a bit, I've left quite a bit of a gap there. But still, let's just resize that. Well, now you've got this, what you can do, again, paintbrush tool, apply your paintbrush stroke, and again, that effect will then be applied on all of those tiles. So you can create some really, truly weird and wonderful pattern designs very quickly like that in Finti Photo. Well, I hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If there's any particular interest, any field of Affinity Photo or Photoshop or anything that you particularly want to be sort of gone through, maybe brushes, maybe layers, maybe pattern designs, maybe masks, all those kinds of things, please let me know in the comments. Or maybe even filters. I haven't really covered filters recently. Maybe procedural textures as well. If you want me to create more videos about procedural textures, please let me know in the comments below. Always happy to create videos on particular subjects of obviously Finti Photo, as well as of course Photoshop, Designer, etc. A like or dislike, always appreciated. And please subscribe to the channel. Always adding new videos all the time. And there are also thousands of other videos about Finti Photo and Photoshop on my channel. Bye.